Great, yes, thanks, Riley. Uh, perhaps uh, towards the end of the workshop, you could uh, put the link in in uh, in the demo or in the the chat there, the the Teams link for our community chat. Um, as well, I will um, would like to mention uh, that. Uh, I am the manager of the Ecology Teaching Labs, and so I'll be leading this presentation today, but uh, you've already uh, heard and seen Riley, who is a full-time co-op assistant with us this term, as well, uh, Bev Rambo, another uh, staff member in the lab, uh, will be joining us, as well as uh, Shane. So between uh, the four of us, um, I uh, trust that uh, everything will We'll be able to answer your questions and participate in the chat. If you have any questions across the top, there is a uh, hand icon, so you can raise your hand. Also, feel free to unmute yourself. It's uh, a, a ca casual uh, demonstration here today. Plus, we'll have uh, we'll have time to talk when when we're actually uh, planting our seeds and working working through our uh, our kits. If um, the, your sound is um, of poor quality. Across the top, there are three dots that uh, when you click will show you quite a few options in Teams and you can turn on live captions. So you will be able to uh, read text of, of what I'm saying as well. Okay. And I think that's about it. I will be toggling through uh, this PowerPoint presentation. We have several slides to get through and then I'll um, uh, toggle onto uh, my dining room table area here where the equipment uh, lists where our equipment is. So if there are any issues, just please you know, speak up and, and let me know. Okay. So the first slide here, native plant container gardening. As I mentioned, this is part of our Invigorate workshop. And funding was generously provided by WWF Canada, uh, Go Wild School Grants. So we were able to purchase these, uh, these kits and either have them shipped to your, your home address or available for curbside pickup outside of the building. So we really, uh, we are, incredibly grateful for for their funding there. And Riley, if you could just let me know, did the slide advance and were you able to see that okay? Yeah, we're on to the next slide. Great, thanks. Okay, so what we have mailed out to you are a packet of seeds. They are, um, uh, there's a variety of native plant seeds. And for those of you that may not be aware, there is um, a few uh, variations on, on how to define a native plant. But here are a few points that the terms generally include where that plant is growing naturally in an area or is indigenous or local to that area. So you may hear uh, a plant that is regionally rare or a plant that, you know, uh, is specific to a bog. It has existed in this growing area for many years. And by many years, we um, are talking on the time scale of hundreds of years. So there have been many non-native invasive plants that have been introduced since the European settlement from uh, a couple hundred years ago. So we are talking prior to that. So natural to our, our uh, untouched environment. Uh, this is becoming a gray area though, because there are naturalized species and uh, common plant that we say is uh, native to, to Canada is a goldenrod. So you may have heard of the Canada goldenrod. It has naturalized to our local conditions, our climate, our soil conditions, and we, we do call it a, uh, a, a native plant, although it was introduced uh, with colonization. So, but it has um, been here for 
at least a couple of hundred years and has thrived. And so, uh, so it's always been uh, amongst uh, the, the naturalists. It, it has been deba debated for some time, but there, there's always exceptions to, uh, to the botany rule there. So why do we plant native plants? Why, why aren't we planting ornamentals or invasive plants, et cetera? These native plants have evolved with and acclimatized to our local uh, soil conditions and as well our local climate conditions. And native plants require minimal maintenance. They do not require a lot of water. They do not require high volumes of fertilizer, uh, heavy pruning, and all, all that maintenance that comes with uh, perhaps more of a, an ornamental garden or a manicured landscape. And so this is what makes it desirable to plant these uh, in our gardens and uh, as well when you know, we're walking along trails and, and taking a look at our natural landscape. They have also evolved alongside other native plants, as well as other taxa like insects, fungi, bacteria. So we have these symbiotic relationships and that diversity provides a healthy ecosystem and a balance of, of those relationships and maintaining that ecological integrity, ideally. We, these insects, particularly pollinators, they rely on these native plants as a food source and as well for, for habitat too. Introducing non-native or perhaps these ornamental varieties, uh, ones that are kind of cool looking, uh, genetically modified and, and bred in, in greenhouses, they don't necessarily provide the food source for our native pollinators. Um, in fact, um, a lot of these ornamentals are bred to reduce the pollen, uh, the quantity of pollen for you know, allergy reasons and as well aesthetics you know, with, with the pollen blowing around. So that is not benefiting our existing natural ecosystem. And overall, they are beautiful and diverse, as you can see from these pictures here. And in uh, future slides, I have uh, pictures of, of the seeds that uh, the plants that you're planting as well. So collecting seed is an ideal and economic option for um, growing native plant seeds. You can simply um, purchase seeds. There are a lot of nurseries now and garden centers um, that are offering uh, native seed packets, but you can also harvest your own if you know how to identify the plant and uh, know where uh, particular native plants are growing that, that you are seeking out. If you are on private property, you always wanna ask for permission to harvest first. And you also want to wait until the seed is mature. So that will uh, be late summer, early fall, and uh, it will not be right now. Pretty much uh, the wind and, uh, and our weather conditions have blown away all, all of our uh, seed right now, as well as uh, uh, birds. So early fall is when you want to gather seed and you want to be responsible. You do not want to harvest the entire area and uh, leave uh, zero, zero seed for regeneration. So you wanna take only about 10% of the seeds. As well, uh, growing uh, momentum with seed libraries. So our local libraries have seeds and seed exchanges. So you can uh, check that out as well. So you cannot simply gather the native seed in the fall, put it in an envelope over the winter and sprinkle it in your garden the following spring. There are uh, one, if not two steps that you will need to do in order to have your seed germinate. 
during the growing season. And the first step is stratification. Stratification, what that means is that those seeds need to be um, cold for a few months. So what this is, is the seeds are will remain uh, dormant. So they will be in, in a cold climate. So let's say the seeds drop from the plant in early fall, ground freezes, snow covers, they are sitting in cold, moist soil for three, four months. It is when they are in this dormant stage that is called stratification. If we are harvesting seeds, we need to do the same. We need to mimic those winter cold months. And so this is what we did with your packet of seeds that you have. We placed them in moist soil in the fridge uh, back in December, actually. So almost four months they have been uh, dormant and the stratification uh, has been done for you. Scarification is a term where we have those really uh, tough outer coating of seeds. So the winter freezing and thawing process helps to break down that hard uh, seed coat or that seed shell. And if you are harvesting those seeds that are hard and that have that, uh, that covering, you will need to mimic that scarification as well by uh, rubbing uh, briskly with sandpaper or trying to etch it somehow, nicking, nicking those shells in order to um, um, grow those seeds for the following season. Okay. So growth requirements, um, not really that onerous with native plants. There are specific requirements such as sunlight, moisture, ideal temperature and soil conditions. The native species that you received are adapted for our Southern Ontario uh, climate conditions. They will need sun for at least part of the day. So three hours or more, as well as full sun. They will also grow best in uh, moist soil. So you do not want standing water, real saturated soil. Otherwise they will uh, become moldy and even decompose. They will tolerate some periods of drought, but ideally you would like moist soil until they are established and, uh, and growing there. And you do not need to add any additional nutrients, fertilizer, or anything. The soil that uh, that's provided to you is sufficient to, to kickstart that growth. So in your kit, you will see a packet of seeds. Those were collected by the lab staff around our environment buildings. So we maintain several naturalized gardens on campus and we uh, gathered, oh, I believe it was last October, a variety. And so those uh, species are listed on your packet there. They were packaged in moist soil, placed in the fridge in December, as I already mentioned. You received two planting containers. We finally sourced a plastic pot that was uh, made from 100% recycled ocean plastic. So. So that was nice to see. As well, we have a Jiffy pot made of compressed peat. The potting soil contains mycorrhiza. And so those are kind of the, the roots and filaments of fungi, which forms this uh, symbiotic relationship with plants to help one another thrive. And so here are the species that uh, hopefully you will see towards the end of the summer and early fall. And a couple of container uh, gardening tips here. So do not over water. The soil should be moist, but again, no standing water. 
what's really nice about these plastic pots is that there's a built-in reservoir tray along the bottom. And so the excess water will uh, pool away from, from that soil. If possible, rainwater would be best for watering and at a minimum, hard tap water. So not uh, wa water that has been softened with, uh, with water softener. You want to place your pots in a sunny location and you can start to move those pots outside once uh, uh, the last frost um, has, has passed. So if you do have a sunny location right outside uh, your um, patio door or on, on a patio, back deck, etc., close to the house, then that is sufficient too. So a couple of options for your um, native plant pots. There are many seeds in your seed packet. So you will probably see some competition or sprouting that, uh, that will appear like they will start to choke one another out. So you may need to thin, thin those out and as well, some may die. So that's why we have uh, filled up with, um, with more seed than, than what would normally be, be planted, I guess. So your options are uh, once they have started sprouting and they have uh, reached a, a significant size that you can move it to a larger pot, especially if you'd like to keep it as, uh, as a patio or, or a deck, uh, deck pot, that is fine. Or you can transplant to an outdoor garden uh, early in uh, late spring, in late spring as well again after all chance of uh, frost has uh, has passed and so you will separate those seedlings trying to uh, minimize the disturbance of those roots they're very delicate and the seedlings are very, very delicate your seeds that are planted in the jiffy pots however because it's made with compressed peat they can be planted directly into a larger pot or into a, a gar garden and so what I would recommend is just either, you know, scoring or uh, breaking apart the bottom of the pot so the roots can um, uh, easily penetrate through into, into the, the, the soil or into your ground, okay? There's something else I wanted to mention. Oh yeah, uh, hardening your seedlings. So you do not want to, um, take your pot of your seedlings and right away place out into the garden. You want to, um, the term is called hardening, where you will put them out on your deck to allow some sun and wind. And so that will uh, strengthen those, uh, the, the stems and those leaves, and then you bring them in. And so, and then keep bringing them in and out of, of the house or your apartment in order to uh, toughen them up essentially before placing uh, out into, uh, into your patio for the summer or into your garden for the summer. Otherwise they'll be incredibly stressed if they just go right from indoor to outdoor to strong uh, wind and sun. Okay. So now I was going to turn on my camera and uh, and do the demonstration. Are there any questions at this point here? Okay, I'm seeing. Uh, okay, great. Okay. Okay. Uh, so Riley, could you just tell me, am I, is my screen maximized? Yeah, I see you okay. as the, the big screen. Okay, good, good. Because I uh, I cannot, but 
that's that's okay. And so we, we've got a question. Uh -huh. um, when we move them outside, do we need to water them or is just rainwater enough? Yeah, you'll want to keep it moist. Yeah. And so when you move your um, pots outside, they will um, they will dry um, quicker than um, when they were inside, right? Because of the sun and wind. So being exposed to the elements now. Okay, I'm just going to, I'd love to just see myself in the spotlight here. I was just gonna add to what you just said, Anne. Huh. Um, yes. When you move them outside, though, um, if you do put them in the ground, as Anne mentioned, they are native and they should be more um, tolerant of the natural conditions. So if they're in the ground and established, uh, the rainwater should be should be good. Would you say, Anne? Yeah, once established. Yeah, and that's what is uh, great about the um, uh, about planting the the native plants. Once they're established, it's incredibly low maintenance. Okay, so I actually have my laptop kind of velcroed here. <laughs> and Lionel's around too. So if uh, yeah, so he may have to help me with. Okay, so I hope uh, you guys can see everything here. And I hope everyone received their kits in the mail too. We were counting on Canada Post to, to get them out to you in about a week and a half. So if you uh, do not have your kits, um, this uh, presentation is recorded. You can always refer to it after and as well, feel free to just uh, email us or, or reach out to us as well. Okay, so, okay. so what I did is, um, I grabbed a bowl and started mixing my soil with water. And um, I believe those were on your in your instruction sheets as well to uh, moisten the soil. And if you did not do that, that's fine. You can uh, go ahead and, uh, and and do that now. You will notice it's uh, somewhat. Um, hydrophobic. It's almost like trying to uh, stir in hot chocolate. <laughs> so I had to add some water, stir it up, add some more. Um, and the reason why we do this is so that when we put the soil into the planter and then sprinkle the seeds and spread out the seeds, that they don't all float up to the top. And so we moisten it so it's nice and dense and then the seeds will stick to our soil mixture and uh, and not trickle with the water, you know, and off to the side or bunch up in, in a pool of water that's, that's in our pot there. So this uh, large bowl here, it actually did uh, fluff up and I used almost one full, full baggie here. And uh, I hope that we gave you extra soil that that it will fill both of your pots and perhaps even some other cells or, or pots that you have at home too. So what I'm going to do is I will start filling up my pot and I will I'll show you and feel free to do this as well. And I hope you can see there's no standing water and there's also no dryness either. It is completely, it is, it is saturated and wet, but water is not being squeezed out of this. So I like to allow uh, some uh, headspace at the top of the pot. So I do not fill it right up to the brim. So you think about when you're watering, you don't want it to all overflow there. So I'm gonna try to fill it up to these ridges here that we have in our pot. 
I'm hearing a couple of dings, but I can't I can't see the chat right now. So feel free to unmute yourself or okay. So I hope everyone can see that. So that is soil up to the top of the ridge there. And so now I have my seed packet and I uh, hope you were storing this in your fridge. I actually noticed some are sprouting already. In my packet, I have common milkweed, black eyed Susan, thimbleweed, nodding onion and hairy beard tongue. So I'm just gonna cut. And you know what? I'm actually gonna pour my whole seed packet into the pot here because I, I do want to split it over uh, a couple of pots. So what I did is I just emptied the contents into my bowl here. I could see already some seeds, some that are sprouting. And I'm gonna take a few pinches and sprinkle sprinkle right on top. Now the depth of where these seeds should be placed in the pot, um, it will be shallow. We don't want it too deep because we use the uh, moist soil here to just kind of mix, mix it around. So it'll probably be three centimeters depth. Okay, so about an about an inch deep for the seed there. I'm just going to take this time to uh, open up the chat and make sure. Okay, oh good. Everyone's sharing their resources here. So be sure to uh, open up the chat and have a look. There's a couple of great resources here. Thanks, Bev. Okay. So I am going ahead and sprinkling. And where seed is concerned, I'd rather have a bit more to account for survival rates, any casualties along the way. And so now I'm just using my fingers and covering up those seeds. I guess the other option uh, next time is uh, holding back a little bit of this soil too, so I don't have to be uh, folding it in as I am right now. And my soil is uh, incredibly moist, so I will water just a, a little bit. Again, I don't want to over, I don't want to have it dripping, but I will water it. 